You may remember Bozeman-based elk hunter and outdoor photographer Mark Seacat from previous webisodes. He recently headed east to hunt wild turkeys with Iowa-based whitetail hunter and outdoor filmmaker Jeff Simpson. When the pair joins up this fall in Missouri, it'll be Mark's first time chasing whitetails. Jeff took a few moments to share some of his tactics to help Mark prepare. I'm, I'm really new to hunting whitetails. Um, yeah, I've got a little bit of experience out west, but learning how to hunt a whitetail property and figuring out the best ways to do it, I have no idea what I'm doing. So other than the expertise I have by getting to come and hunt with you, <laughs> You know, what am I looking at here? You know, whitetail's a lot different. We're looking at, you know, most of the time when I get into a new property, and even old properties, you know, based off last year's experience and the following year's experience and all of that, I always look at my topo maps, look at my aerial maps, and I try to figure out those funnel points, my stand points, my entry and exit strategies, two stands, um, what stands are gonna be good with what wind. Um, it, you've got all these different technologies available to you as a hunter now, and especially as a whitetail hunter because it's really a strategy thing because you might be hunting a block that's 120 acres. You know, you're walking through that much just to get warmed up. Right. You know? I use, you know, in the mountains I'm looking at Google Earth and looking at terrain mm -hmm. and not just the topo maps but actually seeing, you know, the, the views with the terrain view so I can see what's going on. But here with the, you know, the terrain and the, and the trees, it's a little bit different. Yeah, you got a flat aerial map, but you're looking at, you're looking at it differently because, you know, you're looking at a different piece of property. You're saying, I've got bedding areas, I've got primary food sources, I've got water. Um, and I've got certain access points because there's going to be points that you just cannot get into your farms around here because um, you're landlocked. There's not going to be any roads into it, but it's all private land leading into it. And unless you know your neighbor, he's going to let you walk through all his white tail ground, um, which would be really nice sometimes. But most of the time, that's not going to happen. You need to figure out, okay, I can get in on the north end, but how do I get to the south end without messing up the entire farm? And like prevailing winds and how that's going to affect everything. No doubt. When you're getting in the stand, it's not about getting in the stand and having a good wind. It's about starting from the truck and getting into the stand and having good wind the whole way and not bumping anything in between. Gotcha. <clears throat> so what would you suggest for somebody that's, you know, all of a sudden you've got a place you can hunt, you know you've got permission from a farmer and you've mapped out the boundaries. You know, what would you do from there? First thing I do, I take a map like this, I outline the boundary. Um, from there I can get a visual of what I've got, what I'm looking at, that's my slate. Um, from there I start looking at natural funnel points. Um, if there's a big creek and a big ridge that's running around and it opens up to big fields like an hourglass, well it's a nice little pinch point right in the middle. So that's a great place to start. Maybe hang a stand. Um, prior to that really what I go and do is I hang trail cameras um, and I put out minerals, I look at things that will attract deer, and I kind of take an inventory of what I have out there. But it all starts on the map. And do you keep, like, each year, as each year goes by, are you, you know, taking notes on what happens here, what happens here, you know, so you can, yeah. you know, every learn sit. from every experience? Yeah, every sit. I mean, you're sitting in a tree and you're thinking, this is the spot. I've got trail cam pictures, it's a point, pinch point and everything else, but a, a mature buck is going to do a lot of different stuff. So if you sit there four or five times in a row, you see him doing something consistent, you adjust. You take your stands, your sticks, you move, you get in there and you know try to get them down. Gotcha. Well, that's a whole nother ball game. Stands yeah. and sticks and stuff that I'm not used to carrying. Yeah, so. we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But yeah, no, that's the that's the basics. Cool. 101. Cool.